Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to today's uh, CCR Student Research Spotlight. Uh, today we have Ali from um, um, Turkey, and uh, he attended our fall 2020 round um, with uh, Daniel Cassas's uh, uh, computational economics uh, and social science research course. So very excited to have you here to talk about your research. So uh, maybe give us a little bit of a introduction about yourself. Sure, of course. Uh, I'm Ali. I'm a 11th grader at Üsküdar American Academy from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, I'm really interested in economics and a bit of philosophy on the side, and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, maybe talk about your research uh, project first, since this uh, research spotlight. Uh, what did you do uh, at the CCR? How did you come up with this research topic because you, you basically have the freedom to come up with your own topic. So why yeah. do you choose the topic and how did you approach it? Um, so as you said, my course was based on network science, but uh, it also had a social science uh, side as well. So it wasn't completely ba only uh, based on network analysis. Um, as I said, I'm interested in economics. So um, after a few weeks uh, into the course, we started coming up with uh, with my uh, advisor, my mentor, Danielle, we uh, started, uh, he actually first presented us with some general topics. Like he was like, uh, the common themes that we work on with uh, high school student researchers uh, are like trade networks, uh, information diffusion networks. And I don't remember the last one, sorry, but um, the, the three basic topics. And they were like, um, Working off of these three main topics, you might uh, focus on a specific one that you want, you might do literature review, you might ideally work on your own model. And um, after that, I actually uh, had two different topics that one was related to a bit more game theory aspect of uh, economics and combining uh, network science. And uh, the other one was a information diffusion model. Um, and Danielle was like, the game theory one sounds really great, but um, it might be a bit complex. So I'd rather advise you to focus on the information one. Then um, we proceeded with the lectures and everything, but um, unfortunately, an earthquake happened in Turkey um, around two months ago. And uh, the lectures were going on and everything. And I had started doing reading, but um i hadn't you know put a specific name onto my research project um so i came up with uh, an idea and i wanted to study network uh twitter networks uh twitter information networks and um one of the things that i observed during the earthquake um in relation to the uh, tragedy the rescue effort everything was that Twitter and social media specifically had a really important role in uh, the rescue effort. And um, I wanted to study how the relationship between um, nodes uh, in, in network uh, lingo per se, and the edges, um, the users and the their followers, the people that they follow, how that affected the uh, search and rescue efforts, basically. I wanted to connect a thing that I experienced in, you know, I, I wasn't, thankfully affected by the earthquake uh, on the ground, but um, I had people I know in the area uh, that were affected. So how Twitter networks uh, were used uh, to help the search and rescue efforts. Um, and I, I wanted to focus on that, but I had a problem uh, with uh, the Twitter data. Uh, I, I couldn't get access to Twitter data because in network science, uh, there are two things that you can do if you want to do research with uh, actual modeling. You can use data and build a model with data that you have, or you can make up data. Um, using data that you have is really great. It's like the best thing you can hope for, but sometimes you cannot uh, have the data, you cannot find the data, so you have to make up the data. And uh, Danielle and my TA, uh, Arun, was like, well, Ali, if you cannot find the data, then switch to something else. If you want, you can find a better topic uh, instead of this Twitter one, because if you're going to make up data, you could probably uh, make up data for a better topic. So uh, I had to put this all away, like two, three weeks ago, this happened. Um, and I switched to something different um, that's related to, um, again, something that's happening in Turkey, but 
not as much as related as the Twitter one um, regarding political campaigns. So um, there is an election coming up in Turkey. And one of the things that I again observed was that um, some of the strategies that the candidates are focusing on is either trying to expand their base and some candidates are trying to consolidate their base. So uh, my idea was, what if I built a synthetic network of 100 nodes that uh, simulated a small town and uh, changed the proximity of the nodes, uh, changed the edges that they have, and try to model whether uh, the amount of edges the uh, propensity to change with, uh, you know, political propaganda affected uh, the outcome of the my hypothetical uh, election model and see which strategy is actually more effective uh, given different conditions. So currently I'm trying to uh, see uh, what campaign strategies with my, you know, atomistic model uh, will work better. Um, sorry if that took a, lot, a long Yay! time. It was, yeah. Uh, basically where I am right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, you, you basically integrated your own uh, real life experience and that actually changed how you approach your research, which is actually uh, uh, not, not very un uncommon. I mean, many researchers, even established ones uh, at a university, some, some, they may start with something, but then you know, life happens or something that really triggers them to really see their research from a whole new night. Uh, and, and it's amazing that you have this experience now at a very young age before you actually start your university journey. So I'm, I'm sure this, you know, uh, this experience will probably come back to you in the, in the future when you, you know, coming up with your own research, even in the university or even graduate, uh, if you choose to pursue that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so yeah, I, mean, I can see a lot of passion in, in, in you doing your, your research. And I think, um, you know, um, CCR has, uh, uh, at CCR, you have this freedom to choosing your own research topic. So uh, maybe go back to before you applied to CCR was, was uh, so, so, so you know, uh, back then, uh, you, you know what this course is about, but uh, was the research topic already something in your mind or uh, you haven't really decided yet before or when you are applying, before you actually start a program? Um. The thing was, when I uh, applied to the program, I was actually um, not exactly sure what network science specifically was, because uh, my experience with economics was based more on the theoretical side. Uh, so I had I had taken a lot of courses um, and exams with the, you know, microeconomic theory, macroeconomic theory, game theory, etc. And it was more of like the... Um, you know, sciencey side, not the empirical side. So I actually didn't know how I could um, use the things that I had learned uh, with a real uh, life scenario. So um, I can easily say that um, the things I learned during the course and uh, the perspective that I gained uh, actually helped me choose a, a topic at the end, because before that, my idea was, you know, writing, you know, if, if it's uh, right to say uh, theories on paper, I, I didn't know how to apply it for something outside of that. So um, I didn't have that much of an idea. But uh, of course, my passion for economics, social sciences, humanities uh, made me apply to the course. But I can say the idea of my project came with the course and the lectures as we moved on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, as CCIR, basically, what we're trying to do is, you know, ask the professors to teach something that they are specialized in. So, oftentimes, this is, you know, topics or subjects that most high school students uh, 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 previously do not have access to uh, in their high school curriculum or even in other programs or even uh, pre college programs offered by the universities. So, when you are looking at the course description and the syllabus, um, how do you, do you, do you ever feel like daunting because this is something that you may not be fully aware of um, when you're choosing the courses or you just really just curious to see how, how it goes? Um, so before applying, I remember that I felt slightly discouraged because I didn't feel like there was a course that uh, appealed to me because I had worked with the theoretical side. So 
my application was a bit of a gamble. So I applied to every, I remember applying everything under economics, but I didn't exactly know what it entailed. I was like, they listed this under economics, but what kind of economics is this? Because the course descriptions themselves were really uh, general and uh, interesting, but they also sounded hard. So uh, my course specifically has a really intensive a computer science side where we use python to model data you know interpret data manipulate data and i'm not that you know uh knowledgeable about the computer science side i mean of course i know the basic principles of coding but um i can say that easily i uh didn't know a lot before applying and it was kind of like uh so let me apply let me see how things will go and um uh, I, I hope things will work out. But yeah, I can say it was a bit daunting if that's the way to put it. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting to know. Um, yeah, so so SCCR, we don't want, you know, uh, just to offer like introductory level courses on a very general topic. We we do believe, um, you know, high school students um, from around the world with the access to internet and all the resources they can easily find many resources that uh, that offer uh, the similar things. What we're trying to do here is um, obviously uh, on the side of the research experience part is to have uh, the students to 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 really um, uh, uh, dive into a very specific uh, uh, topic. But uh, the topic itself is really just a vehicle for you to work on your own research. So the topic sometimes could be completely different. Uh, yesterday I was interviewing a student um uh she she uh uh, uh she was in a, a group of uh artificial intelligence and healthcare but in the end she actually worked on the on a research paper on uh, art uh, on uh how human brains interacts when uh uh, 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 uh interacts with music so that's something actually completely different from the get-go you're looking at the research topic but Fundamentally, you know, the two sets, uh, the skill sets that they use, the tools, uh, toolkits that they use are actually very much the same. So, um, yeah, so this is a great, you know, foray for, for you to, to dive into something that is very serious in terms of academic research or like. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so um, how, 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 what's your experience with uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel uh, in, the, in the course and, and your TA, Aaron? He's uh, also from Cambridge, a PhD yeah. candidate, I believe. Yeah. Um, so they're they're both really uh, passionate and interested in their you know knowledgeable about their fields. Um, and uh, Professor Danielle specifically um, has a way of tying the content with um, easy to understand examples because you might find yourself uh, completely uh, disassociated per se with the topic you're learning, and you're like what did I just learn? And the lecture ends and you sometimes feel that you don't maybe not understand anything, but he finds a way to tie it back with really easy to understand examples for our level. And uh, I always find that really uh, fun and interesting with the courses and uh, with, with the examples he gives with, uh, I remember one about uh, medieval Italian uh nobility families and how they interact with their networks so i of course he's really knowledgeable and he has a great grasp of the content so um i i didn't have i don't remember having any problems during the lectures and during the ideation phase uh he helped us a lot and uh, arun as well uh as far as i remember he's not on the economic side he's more on the uh, stem side the biology side of network science but um he's really uh you know, knowledgeable as well about modeling. So in our TA sessions, we did the Python side, the coding side, and uh, with uh, Professor Danielle, we did the uh, more theoretical and uh, analytical side. So I think they complemented each other really well, uh, the content. So uh, yeah, they I can say that they completed each other uh, for my research project and during the course uh, as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. Good, good to know. Um, so basically, what at CCR, what we tell the professor is that you know you have completely academic freedom to design a research course that you like. Uh, oftentimes, it's what they they are specialized in. But do remember that please, you know, design this course to be fitting for a, a first year student or a freshman student. 
at your own university. So this is how the experience would like. So let's say if if he, uh, his university opened a course specifically on um, network economics, this could be the course that that's that's like. So um, so obviously it would be suited for someone uh, you know just graduated from high school going to university for the first time. So it's great to hear that um, uh, Dr. Kenel, uh, 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 Daniel he uh, uh, designed the course very well and um, and and then uh, complement very well with the TA section, which is more hands on. So uh, I understand uh, during your group, you, uh, uh, although there's no more than five students in, our, in each group, uh, you really interact with uh, your other peers are from uh, United States, China, and UK. It's a very international group. Yeah. Um, so the thing I remember uh, from the sessions with my interactions was that um, when we were going around talking about our research, our ideas, our progress, I remember learning a lot about uh, what they did and from what they did. Uh, so it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to wait my turn. I'm going to talk. It's taking a long time. It was like, oh, this is actually really interesting. I might, you know, come up with something new from what I heard. Because um, as far as I remember, we all had different topics. So I was working on uh, information diffusion, basically. Uh, one, uh, one of my peers was working on train networks in China. Another one was working with trade networks. So uh, we, because we all worked on uh, different stuff, we could learn about different fields of uh, network science from our research as well. And uh, yeah, we, we were a really diverse group. So I think that also uh, was, a, was a good thing for the course and our learning experience. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's great. So, um, so maybe my last part of, of, of the question is, is about your uh, general, uh, uh, basically, uh, idea of, of, of the program itself. So now you've finished the program and maybe think about when you initially started, when, uh, why you applied to the program, um, what really stands out when you're trying to apply, uh, to CCIR? So what, what do you feel like CCIR is different than, you know, all the other opportunities out there? And now the program is finished. Do you think that's still the case or there's some other new things that you didn't know? when you apply? Um, I think the uh, program has a uh, really interesting way, as I mentioned, of tying the lectures and the TAs. I think that's a really important part because uh, sometimes the TA might just be like, uh, this didn't happen in uh, you know CCIR, but my expectation was that we were gonna have a lecture, we were gonna have a TA, the TA would be more like, okay, this is how you write a paper, this is what we're gonna do, what are your ideas? But it was actually more of like connecting the theoretical side. So um, if I had known that before, I would, I guess, be more inclined to apply. Uh, I, I applied even not knowing that, but uh, for those who are considering to apply, um, and other than the you know lectures and the TAs as well, I think the CCR team as well is doing a really great job with keeping track of individual progress, always helping, and um, you know of course after the course ends with publishing support as well. So I think um, those factors, if I had known them before, uh, I would be even more eager to apply. And um, if you know it sounds interesting for you, if you're interested in a research opportunity, uh, I can easily say that. Um, the professors are great with, according to my, you know, individual network analysis course experience, uh, the mentors, the TAs, they're all great. The content is great. Your peers are great. And um, the fact that it's really selective, I think, is uh, both prestigious and also um, important for a research program. Because, you know, if we were more than five, uh, e even six person people group uh, would have been a bit hard for us to operate. So. Uh, I think everything is analyzed and uh, scheduled perfectly uh, for a great course. Yeah, that's just a, a, a very good uh, conclusion uh, to your program. So, uh, so la last question uh, I, may, I have is um, um, for any future students that are looking at this video, uh, they want to know a little bit of advice. Uh, do you have any advice to give into um, future applicants, uh, either regarding the application or the program itself, anything you want to say? Um, I might say that uh, before applying, uh, in addition to the program name and the syllabus that they're applying, 
if they're undecided, they should definitely go and check out the work of the mentors. Um, for example, let's say that they're in between courses and don't have exactly an idea of which one to apply. Uh, you know, most of the mentors and professors have academia sites, LinkedIn sites, etc. Uh, and uh, go and look at what they specifically focus on with their own research, because I think that will also uh, make them have a better idea of the course, the mentors, the professors, etc. So um, that might be uh, an advice I can give to uh, those considering to apply. Yeah, yeah, this is a great advice, very specific. I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, future applicants will benefit from that. A lot of students take a lot of time in putting their application form together and carefully choosing their uh, research topics, uh, re research courses and so on. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for coming to today's uh, 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 Student Research Spotlight interview. Um, well, we'll definitely keep in touch. Uh, and uh, as I previously said, you know, uh, once, if you ever feel like you have the need to uh, continue working on uh, your research to the publication phase, come back to us and talk to our team, no matter how many months it has been, uh, once you wrap up other things in life. And uh, well, very much, and with the professor's help, very much to help you to get you published at a good journal um, and help, hopefully this is something that can be ben very beneficial um, for your uh, 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 college admission, hopefully next year, and uh, wish you uh, every bit of success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Bye. 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 Bye.